Welcome back, everybody. Let's continue here with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and let's take a look at the Artificer, and specifically the specialist called the Alchemist. Now, here you can see a picture of a dwarf alchemist right here with his little homunculus servant. They give you a picture of that right there in the book. I always got some great artwork. And then if we come down here, they give us the details. So, of course, at level three, you can pick your specialist that you want, and this is one of them right here. They'll start off by giving a little wisdom right here from Tasha. You can listen to that there if you like. So they tell you, an alchemist is an expert at combining reagents to produce mystical effects. Alchemists use their creations, notice, to give life or take it away. So they can do either one. That's good. Alchemy is the oldest of the artificer traditions, and its versatility has long been valued during times of war and peace. So here they tell you, you get a tool proficiency at level three as soon as you pick this up. You gain proficiency with the alchemist supplies. If you already have this proficiency, you gain proficiency with one of some other artisan's tools, whichever you want to choose. So if we come back up here at the top, also at third level, you're going to get your special alchemist spells. You always have certain spells prepared after you reach particular levels in this class, as shown in the alchemist spell table. These spells count as artificer spells for you, but they don't count against the number of artificer spells you prepare. So that's good. Let you prepare more. So here you can see at third level, you get Healing Word. Always a great one to throw somebody right back into combat. Ray of Sickness is given to. Fifth level, Flaming Sphere and Melf's Acid Arrow are always good ones. Ninth level, Gaseous Form. There's a good one. Mass Healing Word. So these are great. Level 13, Blight and Death Ward, and at 17, Cloud Kill and Raise Dead. So all good spells. That's going to definitely help to free up some other slots to the Alchemist. Another thing they mention right here at third level is the Experimental Elixir. And you'll see there's six different elixirs which can be prepared. So they tell you here, whenever you finish a long rest, you can magically produce an Experimental Elixir in an empty flask you touch. Roll on the experimental elixir table for the elixir's effect, which is triggered when someone drinks the elixir. So you're going to want to have plenty of empty flask around as this guy right here. As an action, a creature can drink the elixir or administer it to an incapacitated creature. Either way, if they're down on hit points or something such as that. You can create additional experimental elixirs by expending a spell slot of first level or higher for each one. So obviously you want to use your first right here. Too bad you can't use cantrips. When you do so, you use your action to create the elixir in an empty flask you touch, and you choose the elixir's effect from the experimental elixir table. So we've got a table right down here at the bottom that will determine the effect. Creating an experimental elixir requires you to have the alchemist supplies on your person and any elixir you create with this feature last until it's drunk or until the end of your next long rest. When you reach certain levels in this class, you can make more elixirs at the end of a long rest. Two at level six, three at level 15. So they're pretty limited, not that many. I'd give them double that right there. It seems a little bit too restrictive. Roll for each elixir's effect separately. Each elixir requires its own flask. So again, roll a d6. Number one right here, you get healing. The drinker regains a number of hit points equal to 2d4 plus your intelligence modifier. So nice little extra there. Number two, swiftness. You can add 10 feet to someone's walking speed for an entire hour. Not bad. Resilience. The drinker gains a plus one bonus to armor class for 10 minutes. Nice little extra to AC. Boldness. This may be the best one right here. The drinker can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to every attack roll and saving throw for the next minute. So that's outstanding right there. Who wouldn't like to add a d4 to every attack and saving roll for an entire minute? Number five is flight. The drinker gains a flying speed of 10 feet for 10 minutes. So that's a slow speed, but after 10 minutes, you could go very high. And then number six right here, transformation. It's just as if the person had used an alter self spell. So those are the six different options. Now, again, they tell you you have to roll a D6 to determine the effect. Since these are so limited, it's not till level six they get a second one. And again, you got to burn spells if you want more of them. I would definitely let the alchemist pick the six, one of the six that they wanted. So they wouldn't have to roll 
they have these six options and I would definitely let them pick whichever one it was that they wanted. There's no foresight in a lot of this right here. Again, they got to do it after a long rest or they got to burn a spell. So I would definitely give them that one. I feel that's a little bit too restrictive, rolling the dice to get a random one. Tell me what you think about that. Then at level five, alchemical savant. You've developed masterful command of magical chemicals, enhancing the healing and damage you create through them. Whenever you cast a spell using your alchemist supplies as the spell casting focus, you gain a bonus to one roll of the spell. So you're going to get a bonus right here. It's based on your intelligence modifier. That roll must be either restoring hit points or a damage roll, one or the other. And the damage roll must be dealing acid, fire, necrotic, or poison damage. And the bonus will equal your intelligence modifier. So always good to have a bonus to your healing or your damage either way. At level 9, you have restorative reagents. You can incorporate restorative reagents into some of your works. Whenever a creature drinks an experimental elixir, the ones we looked at previously that you created, the creature gains temporary hit points equal to 2d6 plus your intelligence modifier. So whenever they consume one of those experimental elixirs, they're also going to get temporary hit points. Nice little bit extra bonus there. You can also cast Lesser Restoration without expending a spell slot and without preparing the spell, provided you use the Alchemist Supplies as the spell casting focus. So this type of uh, artificer right here will definitely be able to help out with healing, restoration spells, whatever might be needed. You can do so a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier. So it's going to be several times in most all cases. And you regain all of those uses when you finish a long rest. Too bad that's not a short. Level 15, chemical mastery. You have been exposed to so many chemicals that they pose little risk to you. And you can use them to quickly end certain ailments. So this individual's been around chemicals for so long, you would think they would do harm, but in this case, they're gaining resistance to them. You gain resistance to acid damage and poison damage, and you are immune to the poison condition. How good is that? It's a lot of poison used in D&D. You can cast greater restoration and heal without expending a spell slot. How great is that? Without preparing the spell, and without material components, provided you use the alchemist supplies as the spell casting focus. Once you cast either spell with this feature, you can't cast that spell again until you finish a long rest. So there's some good little extras right there, especially up here, all these experimental elixirs. Again, I would just let them pick which one of the six each time they made one. I think that's going to be needed for them for this class to really be desired by a lot of people. So I hope you enjoyed the video review right here. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.